Dear listeners, dear viewers, welcome to a very brand new program about the wonders of creation, about creationism, about science, hosted by Alpha Omega TV. Uh, our guest today is Mr. John Mackay, geologist from Australia. He's the International Director of Creation Research. Welcome, Mr. Mackay. Thank you, Romulus. I have a book with me today which I'm going to show it to you in a couple of seconds. But before getting into the subject, I would like to ask you the following. Um, in previous programs, we've been talking about how different ethnical groups, they have some kind of, some uh, sort of um, creation story. Okay? If this is true, um, can we maybe talk about the fact that the God, okay, might be the same for all, and uh, let's say Allah this way can be the the, the creator God of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Is is it such a thing possible? Well, at a superficial level, it sounds right. So when I deal with the Aborigines in Australia and they talk about Biami, mm -hmm. and you ask what did Biami do, and they say he made all things. Well, so far that's the description of the Christians' God. Mm -hmm. But you see, if I wanted to know if your mother was my mother, I'd have to ask a few more details, like, what is your mother like? Mm -hmm. And if I found that your mother was a pygmy, and my mother was 10 feet tall or 3 meters tall, it's obviously not the same person. So just the fact that they are women doesn't make your mother the same as my mother. So if I then sit down and I talk to the old Aboriginal like we did up in the way north of Australia, I came across an Aboriginal who was over 90 years old. He remembered what it was like before white men came to his area. And this is 25 years ago now, 26 years ago. So I asked him what was it like before the white man and it was an interesting story to hear how they lived before the white men came and how at night they were scared because the darkness, there were demons, there were spirits, they were afraid of the dark. And then I said, well, what is your creator God like? And he said, when I was a little boy, I, and this is long before the white man came, I asked my father, what is, what is God like? And his father said, I do not know, we have forgotten. Question, is it the same God or is it not? Mm -hmm. All they knew was that he had created. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is find out a few more details about this God. And it may just be a relic memory of the fact that, yes, they remember the story of Noah, they remember the story of Adam, but the details have gotten lost. Or it may be exactly the opposite, where men have invented a God and attributed to him the things they can't explain. So that you, you, you go to the ancient Middle East and you find idols, like the old statues of Dagon. Right now, this is a man-made God. No matter what attributes you give him, we invent it. Now you find the same today. People worship money, right? And we have the goddess of love. Now, these are human inventions. So therefore, no matter what attributes you give them, they're not really talking about the God that's in the Bible. So therefore, you have to first of all find out what are the, what is the nature and the attributes of this God instead of doing like, I mean, I was really disgusted, and I'm sure you were probably too, when the politicians in the USA got up after the September 11th terrorism and pretended all gods were the same. So let us pray to this God or gods, whatever. And of course, sadly, that's how politicians usually get into power. They say whatever they think will be popular. Yes. So you've asked a good question. Under the uh, umbrella of ecumenism, uh, world religious leaders are coming together and they claim they worship the same God, pray to the same God, mm -hmm. and, and worse than all is when you have uh, well, Christian, evangelical Christian leaders uh, joining these groups under the name of, I don't really understand what, because how, how can I um, join a prayer meeting with uh, someone who has uh, no God at all and worship the memory of uh, his relative relatives, okay, 
and claim that we're praying to who? I have a book here, it's called The Evolution Deceit. We would all agree evolution is deceit. Um, it's further the scientific collapse of Darwinism and its ideological background. We do agree with that too. The author's name is Harun Yahia, and we find a little little seal here. And uh, I was just curious to see what that seal is. May I read it to you? Sure, go ahead. The prophet seal on the cover of the book is symbolic and is linked to their contents. It represents the Quran, the final scripture, and the prophet Muhammad, the last of the prophets. Under the guidance of the Quran and Sunnah, the author makes it his purpose. It's important to say this because we have some things in this book that are very interesting. So, and the author makes it his purpose to disprove each one of the fundamental tenets of godless ideology and to have the last word as to completely silence the objections raised against religion, the final seal of the prophet, and goes on with the Quran. So this is a, a seal of approval for its content uh, as pertaining to the religion of Islam. Okay, the, the seal of the prophet, prophet Muhammad. What does it have in common all this with the with evolution? This is what I wanted to know. Well, if uh, Muslim creationists fight for the same uh, against evolution, uh, Christian creationists fight for against evolution. Uh, why don't we join forces? They asked me one day, and uh, fight for a good cause. But I would like to know your opinion from within the evangelical Christian uh, creationist camp. Well, as I've told you before, I don't come from within the church. I grew up outside the church and became a Christian through reading a book by an atheist, which was poking fun at any God who existed and anybody who believed in the Bible. And as I read his arguments, I had to say to myself, these are the most irrational, stupid arguments from a scientific point of view that I've ever read in my life. So I felt convicted, and I really do remember that strong feeling, check out what he's saying in the Bible. But of course, not coming from a church background, I didn't know that you were supposed to start from halfway through, so I started in the beginning. And there you read about the God who created, and you read lots and lots of things about his creation, uh, how man sinned, and how the world went downhill, and how God judged at Noah's day, then the Tower of Babel, and you read lots about this God. And by the time you get up to the New Testament, you then begin to read about this person called Jesus, who is definitely tied into the promised Messiah that's back there in the Old Testament. And so um, I, I came to some very interesting understanding of who this God was and, and what his role in the history of the world was. So much so that when I get asked to debate people whether they're Islamic or whether they're, they're, they're Christian, we, or we have to find a starting point. And I did a debate which will help us understand this question against an Anglican clergyman. Right? But you see, he claimed to be a geology professor too. And his credentials were true. But here was his argument. Since evolution is fact, therefore the Bible can't be read literally. Therefore God must have used millions of years of evolution. And whatever Genesis means, it doesn't mean you know what it says it's got to be read like poetry and I said look before we can sort this out we must figure out who God is and that by the end of the debate I, I told him look you feel free to say you believe in a God who used millions of years of evolution but don't tell me it's the God of the Bible for one simple reason in fact if you read us Genesis 131 this will then help us with the question about is Allah the same as the God of Abraham and Moses um, who is this God in Genesis? Shall we read? Yes, please. Genesis 131. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay, you don't live in a good world anymore. There's killing, there's junk food, right? There's politics, there's death, and there's taxes, right? All of those things together. And yet when you read through the first couple of chapters of the Bible, the God who's being talked about there made a world in which there was no death, no animal suffered in order to keep the other animals alive, there was no killing, no murder, no death, and no taxes. Right? It was a good world. 